To eight hoverboards, video calls and flat screen TVs. We've got them all now, including the hoverboards, but uh, they were the stuff of make-believe when Marty McFly and Doc Brown time travelled in the film Back to the Future 2. Yes, and today's date, October the 21st, 2015, is the day that they chose to go to. Our time travel correspondent, John Maguire, has transported himself just outside. It's looking lovely. Good morning. Yeah, morning, Louise. Morning, Phil. Morning, everyone at home. A very exciting day for Back to the Future fans from around the world. This is the DeLorean time machine, really, in the pantheon... <laughs> whoop! Listen to the sound effects. In the pantheon of, uh, of Hollywood movie cars. This has got to be run up there with James Bond, Aston Martins, and, of course, the Batmobile. It's rigged up with all of the bells and whistles and, of course, crucially, the flux capacitor. Otherwise, it wouldn't be able to travel in time as I've been finding out. They are the movies that took us on journeys through time while leaving their mark in cinema history. What did I tell you? 88 miles per hour! In the second film, Marty McFly travels forwards in time from 1985 to today's date, October the 21st, 2015, marked by fans as Back to the Future Day. So what better way to celebrate than following or leading, you can never be sure in these movies, in the footsteps of Michael J. Fox with a trip in a replica DeLorean time machine. It's owned by Ollie Wilkie, who at 26 was born the year the second film was released. But as Doc Brown may say, age is just a number. I was always a massive fan of the films, um, had another DeLorean uh, which was just standard and it never really occurred to me that you'd be able to own this and it came available and uh, couldn't resist to be honest. Back in the 1980s we were on the cusp of the digital revolution. This autumn another addition to our push button age will start to appear in our shopping malls and centres. It's the shopping machine. The Tomorrow's World team explored a future where the possibilities were numerous, glamorous and seemingly endless. These are two new electric vehicles, but they're not electric cars, they're high-tech tricycles. The films were created by two young Hollywood producers who foresaw a 2015 of flying cars, hoverboards and video calls. Tell us about the predictions that you made, because some things have come right, some things haven't gone right. One of the things we got right is what we're doing right now. This, uh, this video chat, this video conferencing, um, we predicted that exactly right. Do they do a good job of predicting the future? Uh, no. I'm no. taking a spacewalk in the At Bristol Science Museum with Mark Stevenson, who writes about predicting the future. The history of futurology tells you that most predictions are people's prejudices or wish lists or indeed just tell you a lot about the culture at the time when that prediction was made. So if you look at Back to the Future uh, 2 and 2015, that film, it looks an awful lot like 1989. There's fax machines everywhere, people are on skateboards, you know, and everybody's got a baseball cap. On. And here's a question for you. If you had the chance to ride in Doc Brown's time machine, would you set your destination to the past or would you go back? to the future. Come on, Ollie. Let's time travel. Well, I've raided my old 80s wardrobe and it's time to make like a tree and go. To the movie. Yeah, just take a quick look inside here. The time circuit's there. So, for the first time in history, or indeed the future, October the 25th, 20, October the 21st, 2015, the destination time and the present time match up. And that's the first time that that's happened since they made the movies back in the 80s. I want to introduce you to Maggie Philbin hey. uh, from Tomorrow's World, of course, who we saw briefly in the clip, and to Matt, who is a super fan. <laughs> Matt, obviously dressed as Marty McFly. That's right. Talks through your outfit. You've even got your pockets on. Hanging out. I've got them inside out because it's how all the kids are wearing them today, you know. <laughs> uh, I've got the size adjusting jacket on and it, it dries as well, which is uh, good for this weather. <laughs> I've got the futuristic. Oh, let's have a look at the boots. On. Look at those. 
and all of these clothes sort of uh, adapt to fit you, don't they? Yes. As opposed yeah. to my clothes, which I'm adapting to fit them as I, <laughs> yeah. as I increase in age. Uh, what is it you love about the movies? How um, come 30 years on we still love them? I just think they're timeless, really, with pun intended. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a little bit something in there for everyone. There's action, drama, romance. It's a musical in a way as well. I mean, all that fantastic music, Chuck Berry and, and everything like that, Huey Lewis and the News, just kind of captured me as a kid. and. Uh, yeah, just wanted to go on and, and kind of make these movies live on, you know, as they should do, I think. And we've also got, I should show you, we say good morning to Doc and to Marty there um, at the back, Steve and Barnaby, uh, just over the other side of the DeLorean time machine there. So you, a lot of you fans get together for all of these events, don't yes, you? That's it's absolutely right, yeah. wonderful. We've got a, uh, myself and Steve created a group called the Hill Valley Preservation Society. Right. We're on Facebook if anyone wants to check us out, just Hill Valley <laughs> Preservation Society. We travel around the country with a prop and costume display with uh, screen use props, replicas, vintage items from the 50s, and we raise money for the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's oh, research. Great. Good for you. Yeah. That's, that's really good news. Maggie, the 80s. Oh, I know. You, I said you're on the cusp of the digital revolution. Yeah. How much of life today is as you predicted it? Well, a, a, huge, a huge amount, really. I mean, we showed the very first digital cameras on, on Tomorrow's World. Things like SatNav appeared for the very first time on the programme. I, I do think there were a few things that we predicted um, which we are still waiting for. And the male contraceptive pill being one of them, really. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the, what is just so wonderful about the 80s is that you had that whole series of movies who were, you know, concentrating in a very serious way on the future, which is why you've got this army of fans for them. Spielberg took the future very seriously indeed. Um, and he, he made it a place where so many people of that time felt that they really wanted to be. And I suppose it's interesting to think, right, well, has 2015 lived up to the to the hype. Um, I, I think. And what do you think? Well, I think uh, uh, sometimes I do slightly curse the movie because so often Tomorrow's World is blamed for the fact that the hoverboard isn't with us. Right. And I keep saying, no, no, that was Back to the Future. Close as to, a, I think, the hoverboard. Uh, <laughs> you know, well, 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 yeah, uh, well, we do have some now, don't we? But they, they're working with, you know, magnets underneath yeah, yeah, them, yeah, you know, which yeah. is not quite, <laughs> not quite as it was in, in the film. So, you know, that, that's something that's often, um, you know, uh, we're often accused of not having uh, yeah. delivered on. And okay. the, the idea of sort of like, you know, personalised flight. We're waiting yeah. for that one. Yeah, exactly. Great to talk to you both. Thanks to the folks. Uh, thanks also uh, to, uh, to, to, uh, to uh, Mike for bringing the car this morning. Great to see it. Uh, unfortunately, bizarrely, we've run out of time. Uh, very odd. John, thanks very much. <laughs> we'll give you some more back in the next hour. How's yeah. that? <laughs>